all the way back to the brave. Yeah, all so, the history. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, a good listener. Uh, the senior senator from the great state of Wisconsin, Ron Johnson, is joining me now. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, Jay, you know, I still know people that have their little piece of uh, Lambeau Field sod. Yeah, frozen in their <laughs> freezer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or growing it. We could sell that, yeah. Or growing it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you could do that, too. Maybe we can work something out for the seats in there, for the bricks, for something. Uh, we can make some money off of Br the Bradley Center. I, I want to start by, by highlighting something I heard you say when you were talking to Vicki McKenna yesterday. I was driving home from work, and I heard you tell her that, that unbeknownst to the American people, work is getting done in Washington. And you and this, this Homeland Security Department that you chair have passed some important changes to our national security recently. Some important legislation has moved recently. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Well, you know, people don't really realize it. I always say it's good news when a train doesn't derail. It's just not news. I mean, Curtis got Senator Feingold going around and he's visited 72 counties. Well, Jay, I visited 72 counties in 42 days last August recess. I've tirelessly traveled the state. I mean, that's just table stakes. Easy to do. I'm actually accomplishing something. Uh, as, as chairman of Homeland Security, by using a business person's approach, trying to find areas of agreement, once you have a mission statement to enhance the economic and national security of America, once you establish priorities, We've now passed out of my committee 69 pieces of legislation. 24 have now been signed into law by President Obama. The most recent one was the IPAWS legislation that updates our early warning system, taking into account new technology. Man, do we need that. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that was something. I, I listened to the broadcasters that came in talking about how, you know, we need the training and all that type of thing. I said, well, yeah, well, it makes a lot of sense to me. And then, again, it's an, who can disagree with that? And so you reach out, you find a co-sponsor, you, you find areas of agreement. You know, most of the stuff we passed from our committee have been completely bipartisan, oftentimes passed unanimously. So, you know, I, I've actually accomplished something here in my time in the Senate versus Senator Feingold. 18 years, what do, what do you ever do? But, you know, we passed the Federal, the federal Cybersecurity Enhancement Act to protect our federal assets. We've strengthened our visa waiver program to keep this nation safe, safe uh, pre-clearance authorization, which allows... Customs and Border Protection agents and TSA agents to be in the foreign airports so hopefully the next shoe bomber or underwear bomber doesn't get on a plane and threaten an American city. So, again, they're not the kind of piece of legislation that grow government. They identify a problem, find an area of agreement for a solution with on a bipartisan basis, and then we solve the problem. Well, and you, have, you have worked to, I'll give you credit for this, I give you know the same type of credit for Paul Ryan for really working to try to understand poverty in our situation when it comes to poverty in Wisconsin. You have really worked to, to understand the border problem, where the people flowing over the border are coming from, what their history back home is. You've really worked recently to understand the, the Americans' insatiable demand for drugs and how we might go about addressing that as a security and border issue. Yeah, and what is, is yeah, so we've held now 15, I'd call 16 hearings, I'd include that yesterday, on the issue of border security, the different aspects of it. Uh, we published about a 100-page report on our findings. The conclusion I've come to, I think our committee, among many cops, the root cause of our unsecured border is America's insatiable demand for drugs because it's created the drug cartels, some of the most evil people on the planet. They control any part of the Mexican side of the border they want to control. They've destroyed public institutions throughout Central America. That, that drug flow I mean, you want a metric in terms of how freely drugs flow? In 1981, heroin cost about $3,260 per gram. Mm. Their reports in Milwaukee, it's down to $100 a gram. Wow. You get 10 hits per gram, so basically a hit of heroin costs 10 bucks, about the same price as a fancy craft beer in a good, in a good restaurant. Okay? Wow. That's... that's no wonder That's we have this success in the war on drugs. No wonder we have this terrible problem with heroin nationwide, but here in Wisconsin too. And, and you're holding a hearing today, aren't you? Related to that, we're, we're going to hold one tomorrow. So we held one yesterday wow. with uh, General Kelly, head of Southern Command in D.C. on Friday. And I really do encourage people to come out. I want to see that Waukesha County Technical College Building C on 800 Main Street in Pewaukee at 2:30 p.m. I want to see that hearing room filled because this is an important issue. We need more of a public to get educated about it, and we have got to address the demand side of this equation. We have got to start dissuading Americans, particularly our young people, from never taking a drug because once you're addicted, 
man, is it hard to bust out of this addiction. I heard about Donald Trump today. His kids said that when they were too young to even understand what smoking and drugs and drinking were about, when they left the house in the morning going to school, he would reinforce to them every day as they left for school, no drinking, no drugs, no, you know, no, no smoking. And they said that. Yeah, and they said that was it stuck with them. Yeah, he said it stuck with them, and they're not drinkers, they're not drug users, they're not, and and that's the type of parenting that we need that we need more of certainly. Now you, you you do have to harangue and lecture kids every now and again. It does sink in eventually, but we need, you know too often Jay we glamorize in our in our media we glamorize drug use. There's no glamour in the squalor of somebody dying from a drug overdose. My, you know my own nephew of a couple months ago died of a heroin overdose okay Mm -hmm. so this this is affecting every corner of america and lest anybody think it's a victimless crime come down to guatemala with me look at the destroyed public institutions but go to a a a little shelter without an address so it's, it's hidden from the sex traffickers this is a shelter for sex trafficked little girls and of course they're sex trafficked by those same drug cartels those evil people the ages were from 11 to 16. The average age was 14. They had cribs because these little girls had babies yeah. because of the abuse. So your, your drug use, your recreational drug use that you say it has no victims, no, I'll show you the victims. Wow. Uh, and, and, you know, back to national security and homeland security in the more traditional sense, uh, meanwhile, your opponent, Russ Feingold, is claiming that he is happy that he's the lone vote against the Patriot Act, and, and he's hoping that that gets accented. There's a store, there's a, an ad ru- being run right now uh, by an outside group that is that is saying this guy was the the you know the last vote, the lone uh, the vote against the Patriot Act, and he's saying, oh great, I hope that ad runs forever because he thinks Wisconsin voters somehow uh, believe that these national security fears are overblown. I guess. Yeah, well, what's amazing is I've heard him on another program saying he thought 90% of the Patriot Act was good. And that he was the only senator to be so rigid, so extreme in his ideology that he wouldn't take 90% of a good bill. He was the only guy to vote to deny our public safety officials the tools they need to keep this nation safe. Jay, you know, these, these threats are real. They're growing. Look at Sammy Muhammad Hamza. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's not in the news enough because it was a foiled plot, but this, this would be terrorist wanted to kill a hundred people at the Masan Temple. Yep. Read his complaint. Read, read his, his, his own words talking about he's going to spark this. He's going to be the forefront. He, he's, we're going to eliminate them all. He'll be 100% happy if he just kills 30. Yeah, and this is in this community. This, yeah, yeah, this is in Wisconsin. Yep. You know, this isn't in San Bernardino, California. This is in Wisconsin. So, no, these threats are growing. They're real. And Senator Feingold just has his head buried I'll say in the sand. <laughs> We're talking with Ron Johnson. I noticed that President Obama is once again claiming that our military efforts in the Middle East have given us the upper hand on ISIS, and I'll believe that when they're when they're gone. But you know, Ray Ordierno, Ray Ordierno is saying today we need a force of about fifty thousand coalition ground troops in order to go in and erase ISIS in Iraq and Syria. He's not talking about all Americans. He's talking about a coalition of forces, fifty thousand. And I, I, I was thinking, ser- surely a serious president that was really leading could make that happen no i mean if, if it's your best advice from your trusted generals give us fifty thousand men and men and women and we can end this couldn't an american president go to our regional allies and make that happen and do it without even really needing american frontline troops well first of all american president must do that because every day that isis exists they're deep in their roots they have access to sophisticated research laboratories uh, they're going to continue to inspire what we saw in Paris. And they directed the attack in Brussels. They've gone beyond inspiration to direction. So this is a threat. It's a growing threat. We have to defeat them. And, of course, you know, Ray Odierno is a retired general. I've, I've spoken to General uh, Allen as well, the, the former head of this. I'm not going to speak for him, but it not, you only get retired generals kind of laying out what's going to be required. And here's the problem. If, if America doesn't lead enough, the Arab states that we need to be the tip of the spear to, to hold the ground that we that we recover, they're not going to join the effort. If we don't lead enough, they're not going to join the effort. Well, and, and, and President, that's, so that's what's happening. And President Obama, President Obama's take on Syria or, or Iraq is well, you know, we don't, or now Libya. You know, he's, he's feeling he's admitting that he that he goofed up in Libya and they didn't know what came next. They just erased Muammar Gaddafi. But his his claim is well, you know, we don't know we don't know what comes next. We don't create a void there that we don't. Well, again, that's your job. Traditionally, what American presidents have done is they've worked hard and they've figured out who do we leave this to. Once we have have taken care of our problem in this part of the world, who is our ally in this part of the world that inherits it? 
and and helps manage it toward toward a democracy or, or in a more a more uh, humanitarian way. He's just he's just abdicating his responsibility on all this. The two year anniversary of the kidnapping of nearly three hundred girls by Boko Haram was marked yesterday. Just and, yeah, and and just forgotten. You know, gee, the hashtag campaign didn't work. Didn't get them released. Their parents still haven't seen their girls. There are reports that some of these girls are volunteering for suicide missions. You know, make me a suicide bomber because they're so miserable. They're tired of tired of being repeatedly raped by these monsters. And and, and you know, Boko Haram this entire time has only grown in size and strength. It's not just ISIS. ISIS and Al Qaeda have grown. Their affiliates have grown. They've spread. We need serious global coordination here and a true leader. And the person who is going to have to lead, as you say, whether they want to or not, is a president. And a president worthy of a historical legacy, a president worthy of being chiseled in stone someday, would be able to be the moral leader and get this done. I, and I, 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 I've, said, I've said before on the show, and I'm, I'm talking about bringing Russians and the Chinese into this effort because they're dealing with Islamic terror too. I mean, Obama sits on his hands and he plays the small ball. Only America can lead. And, you know, I've, I've been, I frequently get asked, you know, what is the greatest threat? As Chairman Homeland Security, what's the greatest threat? And, and I can list a host of them, the ones that keep me awake at night. I've, I've started answering that, you know, based on this affliction in Washington, D.C., uh, headed up by the president, denying reality. He is the den- denier in chief. And, you know, the fact that he talked about ISIS is the JV team, the, the, the way he talks about Russia, we're going to offer them off-ramps. They're not looking for off-ramps. They're looking for on-ramps. Just found the latest one in Syria. And, of course, that denial of reality completely explains the Iranian agreement. You know, just don't do a nuke on my watch. I don't want to have to deal with it. I'll, I'll funnel $100 billion plus into the economy and military of our self-proclaimed enemy. No, it's, we are in perilous times here, Jay. These threats are growing, and people like Senator Feingold and President Obama – are denying reality, and it's going to, you know, we, we denied the reality when the, when Al-Qaeda tried to bring down the Twin Towers in the 1990s, and look what happened on 9-11. Let, let's talk about denying reality. Do you have a little more time, by the way? Sure. Let's talk about denying reality, Russ Feingold and Barack Obama, because I also want to ask you about something that's getting no attention this week, the recent numbers on the record amount of tax money that our Treasury is taking in, even in this subpar economy. We have an economic engine that, that's taking in about $3 trillion a year or so, and Obama's spending $4 trillion. How is it not a scandal that the Treasury is taking in, even in this economy, taking in enough that in the Bush area we would be running a, era, we would be running a surplus, and in the Obama era we're still running huge deficits, trillion-dollar deficit? Because our government's out of control. Two-thirds of the budget is an automatic pilot. It's not appropriated. And, of course, you have a news media that backs up Obama. You're right, by the way, since the trough of 2009 till last year, even with meager economic growth. I mean, this is the slowest growing economy after recession yep. since World War II. I mean, by far. We've increased revenue to the federal government by $1.1 trillion per year with meager economic growth. So what that ought to tell everybody is what government policy ought to be directed toward is economic growth. Yes. And it, the way you grow your economy is start reducing this regulatory burden. The exact opposite is happening. I talked to a paper manufacturer in Wisconsin, doesn't want to be identified because he'd be targeted by this administration, said that he just told up the cost of four regulations, just four. And the equivalent cost to his business is $12,000 per year per employee. So if you're wondering why wages have stagnated, look no further than the regulatory burden being placed on people that are responsible for increasing wages, that would have the capability if it wasn't the federal government loading those, that regulatory burden on them. And, of course, our tax system's completely uncompetitive, and we've got one side of the political aisle artificially driving up the cost of power. Remember President Obama said because of his policies, mm-hmm. electricity rates would skyrocket? Well, that's what he's enacting, and that's crazy if you want to be competitive globally. And you've got Bernie and Hillary and a fine gold side of the aisle saying we need to ban fracking. This is one of the things that they're going to do if they, if they get into office uh, uh, again. Obama's also leaving us with about a $20 trillion national debt and a structural deficit of, I mean, do you know how much this is going to be yearly moving forward? Because yeah, it's, over, gone, over it's gone up and down. We're now, we're now cheering like a, a, a half a, bill, a trillion dollar yeah. debt. Yeah, remember, we used to be outraged by deficits that exceeded $400 yeah. billion, which is what it was last year. No, over the next 30 years, Jay, according to Congressional Budget Office, our deficits will total... Sit down. $103 trillion. $10 trillion the next decade, $28 trillion the second decade, $65 trillion the third decade, 
$103 trillion packed that on to $19 or $20 trillion of debt. Wow. You compare that to the entire net private asset base of America today is $116 trillion. And there you go. There's denial of reality. You've heard my story in the White House, right? Where when I begged President Obama to use his bully pulpit to tell the American people that truth, he said, Ron, we can't show the American public numbers that big. I mean, if we do, they'll get scared to give up hope. And he says, besides, Ron, we can't do all the work. We have to leave some work for future presidents, future congresses. Yeah, there you go. Their you know, denial of reality is killing this country. It, it is. And, and these are, again, there's a theme here, the difficult problems that neither side of the aisle at times has wanted to tackle, but the difficult problems that the left just refuses to tackle, either because they want the wedge issue or it's too hard or this is going to create some sort of some stripe. We're going to have to tell some people no. They're uh, just going to promise more benefits. They're just going to yeah. give away more free stuff and continue to mortgage our children's future. How moral is that? Uh, the biggest drivers of these deficits and debts are the unencumbered entitlement programs. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare now has exacerbated that problem in a big way. This country's on an unsustainable spending path. And again, your opponent crows about being the final vote that passed Obamacare. Do you think the Democrats, do you think Feingold and these, and these Democrats are, that are running for office in fall, are they going to have to admit before fall that Obamacare has already crumbled under its own weight? I'm going to certainly try. You know, Senator Feingold, I heard him on a show saying, you know, this health care bill really isn't as bad as some people are pretending it to be. Well, I point out that Janice Fenneman in Spooner, Wisconsin, a six-year-old woman, wrote to me and said that before Obamacare, she was paying $276 per month for health care. Now she's paying $787. So I'm sorry, Senator Feingold. She's a real person being harmed by your health care bill. And let's face it, that was a massive consumer fraud. How many times do we hear President Obama say, if you like your health care plan, your doctor, you can keep him, period. And he promised America, mm -hmm. pass his health care bill, your family will pay $2,500 less per year for health insurance. Tell that to Janice Fenneman. Well, Tell and, that to the hundreds of people that write to me about this. And the deductibles are crippling, and no one talks yeah. about those yep. either. But uh, consumer fraud, it's the biggest consumer fraud. That's a great term for it, because that's what it has been. Can you, can you imagine if a CEO of a company made those promises, those false promises about a product, uh, he wouldn't be a CEO of that company would probably be bankrupt. Well, thanks for your time. I, I should uh, suggest that we're in a, a, uh, an election here. We're in a campaign season. Ronjohnsonforsenate.com is your website.